Welcome to the video lecture about energy and specific heat capacity. After watching this video lecture, you should go onto Canvas to, to find the details of the assignment that is due January 30th at the beginning of class. Energy is the capacity to do work. Whether you're driving a car from here to there or you're a strong push person pushing a giant boulder up a hill, energy is the capacity to do work. Energy comes in a couple different forms. The first type of energy is called potential energy, or PE, and it is stored energy. The potential energy can be stored due to position, meaning relative to gravity. One example of stored energy due to position is the water behind a hydroelectric dam. The water at the top of the dam has a lot of potential to do energy as it moves from the top of the dam to the bottom. A spring also has potential energy. As you compress the spring, you're storing energy in the coils, and when you release the spring and let it bounce around, you're releasing the energy in the form of kinetic energy. Another example of potential energy due to position is raising an object to a higher altitude. The most important type of potential energy for this chemistry class is stored as chemical energy. Gasoline or other fuels have potential energy stored in the chemical bonds. That chemical energy that's stored can be released during a chemical reaction. The second type of energy is kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion or movement. It can be seen in a few different ways. Mechanical energy, like the moving of gears or moving parts, is one form of kinetic energy. Electric energy, which is the movement of electrons or ions, is also kinetic energy. Heat is the movement of particles, so it is a type of kinetic energy, since kinetic energy is the motion of things. For heat, particles must be present, either molecules or atoms. We can relate kinetic energy to the three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Gas molecules move the fastest of all three states. The more motion, the faster the molecules, the more kinetic energy those molecules have. Liquid molecules move slower than gas molecules, so they have a lower amount of kinetic energy. Solid atoms, because they do not move very much at all, have a very low or the lowest amount of kinetic energy when compared to liquids and gas molecules. The faster the molecules move, the more kinetic energy they have. Heat, as I mentioned, is a form of kinetic energy. And the standard unit for heat is the joule, J-O-U-L-E, abbreviated with a capital J. Another unit for heat, aside from the joule, is the calorie, abbreviated C-A-L. And a calorie is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of, a of one gram of a substance by one degree Celsius. There's a conversion between joules and calories, but it's not exact. It has four significant figures. There are 4.184 joules in every one calorie. We should be careful not to confuse little c calories with big c calories, which are what we find on the back of food packages. One big c calorie is a thousand little c calories, or one kilocalorie. So there are a thousand calories in one kilocalorie, or a big c calorie, as we see on the back of food packages. Specific heat capacity, which is abbreviated with a capital C, is a physical property of a substance. So all substances have a specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity is the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of that substance by one degree Celsius. It comes in two different forms of units. Since we can measure heat in joules and calories, we have two different forms of specific heat capacity. We can measure specific heat capacity in joules per gram degree Celsius, or J divided by G degree Celsius. But since we can also measure heat in calories, we can measure specific heat in calories per gram degree Celsius, or CAL per gram degree Celsius. I'm going to talk about two different substances and their specific heat capacity. Iron, like this iron pan, or like the spatula from our laboratory, has a specific heat capacity of 0 0.473 joules per gram degree Celsius. Water, on the other hand, has a higher specific heat capacity of 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. This means that more heat energy is required to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. I'm going to show you an example of that. I'll start by lighting a Bunsen burner. My hair is tied back, 
so it won't catch on fire, and I'm wearing my safety goggles. I'll turn on the heat and use the striker to turn on the Bunsen burner flame. So water has a higher specific heat capacity. I'm going to add some water to this beaker. It requires 4.184 joules of energy to raise one gram of water by one degree Celsius. If I hold this beaker of water over the Bunsen burner flame and I heat it up for five seconds, one, two, three, four, five, I don't think the water is very hot. It's only been there for five seconds. I can easily stick my finger in and it still feels cool. That's because water has a very high specific heat capacity and a lot of heat energy is required to raise the temperature. On the other hand, if I take a metal like iron that has a low specific heat capacity and I hold this in the Bunsen burner plate for five seconds, one, two, three, four, five, I know from experience that this is very hot and I don't want to touch it because a small amount of heat energy will raise the temperature of a metal which has a low specific heat capacity by, at a lower rate than water. Because water has a higher specific heat capacity, more heat is needed to raise the temperature. Something with a low specific heat capacity requires a small amount of heat to raise the temperature in the same degree. Turn up my Bunsen burner. Okay. So on your own, after you've watched this video, you should open up your textbook and read chapter 4.5. It's all about heat and specific heat capacity. It can give you more detail about the topic. You then, should then go on Canvas and complete an activity called Specific Heat Capacity that, call, that challenges you to think about specific heat capacity and how it's applied to the world around us. You can find that activity in the module section of Canvas in the Unit 2 folder. After you've completed the activity, you should demonstrate how well you understand specific heat capacity by writing two potential questions that could be on an exam. One of those questions should require a calculation, meaning it's quantitative and the other should require a qualitative answer or an explanation. Bring the completed specific heat capacity activity and the two questions that you've written to class on Thursday. As a reminder, the Chapter 3 homework is due at the beginning of class on Thursday also, and the Lab 4 safety quiz is due Wednesday at midnight. We will be completing Lab 4 on Thursday, so you should make sure to have your pre-lab completed in your laboratory notes.